Hello and welcome to another episode of The Clever Dev. Today we are going to take a Material UI data grid, the free version, and add expand and collapse to it. So you can see how I've done that here. And if I click this icon on any given row, then that row expands and the previous row collapses. So interestingly, the expand functionality is available on the paid versions of the data grid. And as far as I can tell, it looks like they actually stripped it out in order to make the free version of the data grid. Why I say that is because I found at least one of the props that is used to expand the paid versions still existed in the free version and the documentation I think even mentioned it. And then it just didn't actually work or do anything. And the other required props were missing. So kind of interesting. What that means is that I had to build this completely on my own using use state and the collapse component. So um, it was kind of an interesting experiment. And if you're interested in seeing how I did it, then stick around. I like to keep these videos as concise and short as possible. So what I do is I have a lot of the code in place already that is not really core to this video. So what I have here is I've already got a data grid and it's already all set up, but it does not have the expand and collapse functionality on it right now. So we've got a paper wrapping it just to put some margin and other styling on there. Our data grid, uh, once again, some styling on it. And then I have my rows and columns already set up. So the rows is actually the data. And so um, I'm using Faker to generate some data. It's just like street address, zip code, city, state. And so um, that address is const exists here. And then our columns are really what give some structure to our data inside of our data grid. So it's always good to keep in mind that material UI tables are focused on the row and the cell, whereas the data grid is focused on the columns. So anyway, you can see that I've got my columns here and it is an array of these objects where each object is define, defining a column. So our first column is this ID column, and this is where I will put the component that, uh, when clicked, controls the expand and collapse. So then we have our address, our zip, and our city and state. What I'll put inside of each of these is we've already got uh, a render cell. It's already returning a box that is wrapping just a simple div with the data in it. So then inside of this box and adjacent to this div, at least from a code perspective, it's adjacent. Here I will put our collapse. Uh, really, I'm getting ahead of myself. Really, uh, what we'll just put here is the data that we care about being below this original div. So it happens to be that that data will be wrapped in a collapse and that's how that gets controlled with expanded collapse. But anyway, so we need to start off with a couple things here. The first is that we need to introduce a state value. So I'm going to put that state value up here. I already have use state imported and our state value is simply going to be a const and I will call it clicked index and then set clicked index. And what I will do is I will set this equal to a value of negative one. So what this means is once we get some additional code in here, of course, then none of these rows will be expanded yet because I've given this a default value of negative one. And what I will do is I will have the collapse observe if its particular row, the index of its particular row is equal to whatever value is in this clicked index state value. So if they equal, then the collapse component knows that it needs to expand. Before we keep going with the code, I want to mention that you can copy all of this code from my post on my website. I'll include a link to it in the video details, and it also includes nice screenshots and so on if you're interested in those resources. Also, I want to mention that I have a material UI course on Udemy. There's a coupon code in the video details, so definitely check that out. I think that's a huge resource. I dive super deep into styling all of the most difficult material UI components, build an entire app in there and so on. So definitely I explore the data grid quite a bit in there. So check that out. The first thing that we need to do is add our icon and click handler here to this ID column. If we look at our data in our addresses, then we have this ID field and it's simply the index of our addresses. So um, what we'll use that for here is I'll set that clicked index with this ID value 
and then our render cells below will observe that value and they'll know when to expand or contract based on that value. So here inside of our render cell, it's gonna be probably our longest render cell right here. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is say cell values. And this is of type grid render cell params. And it just took some digging through the MUI docs to find this value. I always use TypeScript and so um, I believe that it's very useful, but it does add a little bit of extra work in terms of having to peruse the docs and find some of the values that you need for typing things appropriately. So here inside of our render cell, I'm going to say return. And I always like to wrap these long ones within parentheses. So what I'm gonna do is I will use an icon button. Those are not necessary. I could have used a regular button and added an icon using the I think it's the end adornment prop, for example, would have worked. But anyway, all that I care about is truly just the icon in this. I don't really care about any visible button functionality or uh, like a variant on my button, no border, no nothing like that. So the icon button is a good choice. And I will give it an on-click handler. And I will say that my on-click handler um, will pass the, we'll check the clicked index first and see if that state value has a value right now. And we'll say, check our cell values against it. So this cell values dot value, it knows what field it's in or what column it's in, I should say. And so this is going to be our index value. And so we're gonna check our clicked index state value against this index value and if they're the same, then what I want to do is I want to close or collapse my current row, and I don't want to expand any other row, so I'm just gonna pass negative one to our clicked index. Otherwise, I will say set clicked index as simply the cell values dot value again. So basically that's passing in the index value of this current row. So now we've got to do the work of closing all of this. So let's take a look. Looks like we have enough curly braces. And we're good to go. I'm going to add my comma here just to please the compiler. Now there's one other thing that we need to do. We've got our icon button in here. However, what we don't have is anything visual to indicate uh, if the row can be expanded or contracted. So what I'm gonna do is, um, instead of just having an empty icon button, then I'm actually going to check cell values again. And right here, what we'll do, and of course I gotta check cell values dot value. And once again, I'm gonna say, is it equal to the clicked index? And if that's true, then I'm going to use an icon that I imported, this keyboard arrow up icon Otherwise, I'm going to use keyboard arrow down icon. And that should really be all that we need to do to have a nice looking little chevron in here to signify whether the row can be expanded or collapsed. Let's take a look at that in our app and make sure it all looks good. All right, so we're looking at it here in our app and there's no collapse component or collapse content or expand content for any of these rows yet. However, I do see that my icons are behaving appropriately when I click them. So if I click this in the second row and then I click the icon in the first row, the icon in the second row uh, flipped back to the uh, icon that signifies that that row is expandable. So anyway, let's go back to our code and add some content for each of these rows. For the content columns, we actually already have our render cell in here, and we have a box wrapping a div, and that seems a little bit heavy. What a box is, is it's actually the most simple or basic MUI component. It renders as a div without any styling whatsoever. The value of it is that you can use things like the SX prop and access theme values like primary.main. Now I would have text color that has uh, this primary main color uh, for it. And so 
Um, there's definitely value in having the box. However, this is obviously heavy right here. I've got the box and then a div, and then, you know, it's just not necessary to do that. However, the reason that I've got this is because what I want to do is actually want to add my collapse component right here uh, inside of the box. So I'll have this div and then lining up below it, stacking below it will be whatever I have in my collapse. So the collapse component is kind of interesting and we can look at it in the DOM in a minute. It actually renders as three nested divs and that seems a little heavy to me, but I'm sure it's just necessary for the collapse and expand mechanism to work properly. So anyway, here inside of our collapse, what I need to do is I need to use the in prop. And what I'm gonna observe is our is whether our cell values dot value is, uh, excuse me, not cell values dot value. I wanna actually look at cell values dot ID. We're gonna see if that is equal to the clicked index. And so if this is true, then our collapse will expand. Why the prop is named in, not sure. It seems a little bit of an odd name, but that's how it is. So anyway, then that will control expand collapse of the content inside of our collapse. And of course, then we need content inside of our collapse. So here I'm just gonna keep it simple again. I'm gonna say box and I'm gonna use that SX prop. And I'm gonna add a little bit of styling in here. But before I do, oops, I've got it in the wrong spot there. Let me move that over here. And uh, let me get some text in here. We'll flesh out what to put in our SX prop in just a moment. Um, so here I'm gonna just say expanded and colon, and then I will actually just, uh, for this simple example, I'm just gonna take whatever the content was in the unexpanded area or that primary area, and I'll just you know, have it represent down here, but I'll say expanded so that we're aware of where we are, of what we're looking at. So now I want to add a style value. Um, I will call it, let's call it detail styles. And so I'll make that const appear. And I'll simply say border top. And let's say 2px solid. And often you'll see a color added at the end of that, but I want to use a theme color. So I need to say border top color, primary.main. If I tried to add this primary.main here, then it wouldn't be parsed properly and um, it just wouldn't render properly. So we actually have to call out our border top color separately. And I'll say PT of two. So that's padding top of two in MUI. This value is actually accessing the theme spacing field or function actually it is. So it's passing a value of two into that function. What that function does is just multiplies by eight and returns a pixel value. So this is like saying padding top 16. So let's go down here and put this in our SX prop. And since detail styles is an object, then I didn't need those inner curly braces on my SX value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to just reuse this collapse everywhere. And so we'll put it there just the way that I made it. It's dynamic. It's using the particular cell values and checking them against our state value. So there's nothing uh, row specific or column specific, I should say. There's nothing column specific in any of these. All right, so that should be all that we need in our code. Now let's go take a look at everything in the app. All right, here we are. And you can see that one is already expanded simply because uh, we were playing around with it before. It looks like if I have a row expanded and I collapse that row, it collapses properly. If I have a row expanded and I expand another row, then the original row collapses properly. So you can see how this is kind of, um, I don't want to call it a hack exactly, but it is a functional expand and collapse. One thing that it doesn't have is it would be extremely difficult and I cannot recommend trying to uh, increase the row height when you expand content inside of it. What happens if you do that, and I've tried it before, is that it actually um, affects the internal calculations that the data grid is doing to figure out its own height. And so some of like the virtualization gets thrown off by that. So you definitely don't wanna make one row taller than the other rows. 
So anyway, um, if you're satisfied with not being able to do that, then you can definitely use this technique that I've done to add some expand and collapse functionality inside of a material UI free version data grid.